Cool. So uh, there's a handful of things I want to uh, cover with this. I'm Ryan Beisner on the OpenStack uh, engineering team. I'm a QA engineer. Um, and so there are a number of ways that you can go through a development process in your product or your series of charms or your, your, your single charm or whatever it is that you're developing. Uh, the OpenStack charms do things uh, uh, in, a, in a certain way that I think is valuable. I wanted to kind of highlight that and also highlight uh, some of the testing uh, infrastructure that we have in place and process around that. Um, so this is basically going to be uh, two or three pieces here. We'll touch on kind of the charm release process of the OpenStack charms, just to make sure everybody hears it while we're here. Uh, I want to also kind of throw that against the wall uh, with a chart of uh, kind of the timeline of support for things like Ice House, Kilo, Liberty, uh, Mitaka, or whatever it's going to be. Then also compare that a little bit with uh, the Ubuntu release schedule, which is, you know, you've got Precise, uh, we just had Utopic uh, EOL, we've got widely in the development, Vivid is out, whatever X is going to be in April, right, nobody knows yet. Uh, and so one of, the, one of the tasks of the uh, OpenStack team is to take this product and make sure that it works across all currently supported combinations of Ubuntu and OpenStack. Right? It could be trusty Ice House, Precise Ice House, it could be Vivid, Kilo, pretty soon Wiley Liberty, or Trusty Liberty. Right? So the, the support matrix grows, grows fairly large there. Um, just a GUI, right? Everybody's seen the Juju GUI. This is what OpenStack ends up looking like. It's roughly 23 charms. Those are not machines, those are actually services, right? And so you can see there's a, a, a complex set of relations that happen. Keystone being pretty central, Nova Cloud Controller being pretty central. Uh, and the idea of, of our testing is that we use Amulet tests. Uh, we're switching to Bundle Tester soon, as soon as we kind of retrofit our make files and semantics around that. Uh, but the idea of our Amulet tests would be, you know, if we take any particular charm, uh, it's kind of difficult to read, but uh, Cinder here, for example, you see the green, you see the green lines, those are the uh, relations that uh, your hooks and your code care about. Uh, so our approach is the Cinder Amulet test is basically going to stand up a Juju deployment of a minimal set of this deployment. And then it's, it's going to have code to exercise and inspect that relation data. And so when Marco or David or somebody uh, proposes a change against the sender charm, the bot automatically sees that in the uh, launch pad, kicks off the amulet test, reports back, uh, and that way the code reviewer has that input when they go to land the code. So, the process works pretty well with that regard. Um, so the release cadence of the OpenStack charms used to be in line with the Ubuntu release cadence, which is every six months. Uh, we do have now an interim release every three months. So uh, we just put out uh, 1507, the uh, uh, OpenStack charm bundles, uh, charms and bundles rather, um, and pretty soon you'll have uh, 1510 out, right, just around the corner followed by uh, an interim release in uh, January 1601, and then uh, the big one, X, coming around the corner of the LTS, right? So we're all leading up to that. Uh, this is kind of an important uh, moment, right? Because we're now here, released, Vivid. We've got Wiley about to be released. And then it's a five-year support release, right? So we, we really iterate tightly on each of these interim releases so that we can make sure when that new one comes around, everything can be functionally tested along the way, and uh, there's not been a test gap between, for example, going directly from trusty one LTS to X, the next LTS. There's uh, quite a lot of uh, distance there. And so the challenge is you take all of the OpenStack charms, those 23 charms, multiply that times however many uh, Ubuntu releases there are and uh, OpenStack releases, right? So I think that this applies uh, to more workloads than just OpenStack, right? And everybody would probably want to care which operating system they're going on and uh, which versions of their thing that they're releasing. Uh, in our case, this, this is just another way to look at that support model. This is online. Uh, you can see uh, the purple ones are the LTS major releases that are the five-year support. Uh, generally what we do is if you have Ice House that coincides with an, L an LTS, for example, it just tracks the underlying OS release uh, lifecycle. Uh, take note that the interim releases are 18 months, and then again up here we'll have a, no a new LTS with uh, Metaka that will be good for another five years. 
And so you, we just keep stacking that on. At any given point in time, you've got a handful of uh, options for upgrading. Any questions on the life cycle before I jump back into the testing and that thing? <laughs> oh, yeah, so your charms can do the same thing, right? Identify which OSs you want it to work on, identify which versions of the thing you're deploying that you wish for it to work, and uh, I may be biased, but define your testing around that before you get too far into development. Okay, so there's a handful of good things that you want to come out of this, right? A clear support path. People know what to expect, where it will work, where it won't work. Uh, positive user and developer experience are always a good thing. And um, having that process transparent, I think, is helpful for those involved. Right? Uh, so the clear support path, uh, you want to be able to have these charms upgradable. Uh, and that way, when uh, you do have this release cadence happening, these charms can users can then uh, get the new charms, right? That's uh, more of a juju thing, but uh, I suppose, well yeah, it's, it's a juju thing and, and a charm thing. You want to make sure that your interfaces haven't changed dramatically or that your config options are consistent across those new versions of the charms. Uh, and then I think one important thing that there probably, I don't think there are a whole lot of charms that do this package upgrade thing, right? So there's an action that you can set in, in the OpenStack charms upcoming where you can say, I want to take this thing from Ice House to Juno, just do it, right? and, and it'll happen. Right? So you take all these 23 things and they all start blinking lights and all kinds of cool stuff happens. Uh, so this is the big thing for me on this. So if you imagine um, you've got the precise series of charms and you've got the trusty series of charms, and soon the X, presumably the X series of charms. Uh, you know, for example, there's, uh, I don't know, pick on one. MySQL, right? There's a precise MySQL charm. It's functionally very similar, but it's still a different code base than the trusty MySQL charm, right? And so what we didn't want to do was have to have 23 times however many releases there were going to be, right? So that's why we kind of take that matrix approach and take one charm and test it all the way back across all the whole spectrum of uh, the intended support uh, targets. So one charm to consume, one charm to consume for the uh, user, that's a good thing. They don't have to determine which one is the one to pick. One charm to maintain for the developers. These guys back here, think, I think, uh, enjoy that. So when you say one charm to consume, it's the latest version that the user consumes. Right, you, so you're still gonna have charm versioning, previous versions available, yeah. right? But there's not multiple keystone charms, right, for Icehouse or Fino or Kilo or for Precise so or Trust. So the latest one always moves in the that's right. We, we backwards test and, and as much as possible future tests, and I'll show that here in just a sec. Uh, so it's one charm, right? One charm is evolving over time. That Keystone charm was different two years ago than it is now. But along the way, it's grown support for the new config options that we need, uh, maintaining backwards compatibility until things start EOL, and we you know, consider ripping things out at that point. So the Ubuntu release cycle looks like this. And uh, so you are here. So there are a handful of uh, supports, uh, supported releases. And there are a handful of uh, kind of critical points in time where users will start to EOL. Well. Right. So if you've got uh, this scenario and uh, Vivid will be EOLing sometime in 2016 and a new one's going to be releasing, you have some tests to maintain. You have something somewhere that you want to flip so that you are expecting those to either pass or fail or to not run at all, right? And so at this point in time, this is what we care about. And uh, my uh, suggestion is this is what you should also care about. Right? If, if you intend to support the things that uh, Ubuntu supports as far as releases. Uh, and so this is, this is uh, just kind of dissecting a chart that's already out there. Soon this is what we'll be tasked with Liberty, pulling Liberty in with, uh, um, or not Liberty, I'm sorry, the uh, X-ray or Zeta or whatever it will be called. All right, so as time goes by, we uh, drop releases and uh, then look into the future. A year from now, two years from now, this is about the worst case scenario that I can see when you start calculating all the various permutations. It's, uh, you'll have, at one point in time, three LTSs to care about just briefly. And, uh, so 
So it's it's interesting to track that. That's a, I, this is a lot of what I do is tracking this when these dates come and go, uh, when things actually start to work, so that I can enable the tests as kind of a booby trap to know when we've regressed, right? Because at a certain point in time, uh, you know, halfway through a development cycle, why they may not be working for example, right? It's not finished. And so then that box will shift, and that charm will evolve to support the configurations there. And uh, then the testing behind that, of course, evolves along with it. Clear?